Hi and welcome back to freesciencelessons.co.uk. By the end of this video you should be able to describe the inherited disorder cystic fibrosis. You should then be able to complete Punnett square diagrams to show crosses involving cystic fibrosis. And finally you should be able to express the outcome of these crosses as a percentage and a ratio. In the last video we saw that genes can have different versions and we call these alleles. Remember that alleles can be dominant or recessive. A dominant allele will always be expressed in the phenotype, even if there's only one copy present. However, a recessive allele is only expressed if two copies are present. So in this video, we're looking at the inherited disorder cystic fibrosis. Cystic fibrosis is a disorder of cell membranes, and you could be asked that in your exam. Cystic fibrosis is controlled by a single gene, and that gene has two alleles. The allele for normal cell membrane function is dominant. This allele has the symbol capital C. However, the allele for defective cell membranes is recessive, and this has the symbol lowercase c. What this means is that in order to have cystic fibrosis, a person has to have two copies of the defective allele. In other words, they have to inherit a defective allele from both of their parents. A person with one defective allele and one normal allele does not have cystic fibrosis. We say that they're a carrier of the cystic fibrosis allele. So let's take a look at how cystic fibrosis is inherited. I'm showing you here a man who has one copy of the cystic fibrosis allele and one copy of the normal allele. In other words, this man is heterozygous and is a carrier of the cystic fibrosis allele. This shows a woman who is homozygous for the normal allele. She does not have cystic fibrosis and is not a carrier. So what would happen if these two people had children? To figure this out, we're going to construct a Punnett square. First, we write down the genotypes of the gametes. Remember that in gametes, chromosomes are single. So half of the male gametes will have the cystic fibrosis allele, and half will have the normal allele. All of the female gametes will have the normal allele. I'm showing you here what happens when these gametes combine during fertilization. 50% of the offspring will have the genotype capital C, lower KC. These offspring do not have cystic fibrosis, but they are carrying the defective allele. So these are carriers. The other 50% of the offspring have the genotype capital C, capital C. These people do not have cystic fibrosis and are not carriers. As you can see, the ratio between carriers and not affected is one to one. Now, there is a really important point here. These numbers are simply probabilities. So on average, 50% of the offspring will be carriers and 50% will not be affected. However, because these are just probabilities, it's possible that all of the offspring could be carriers or all of the offspring could be unaffected. Okay, we're going to look now at the cross between two carriers of the cystic fibrosis allele. I'm showing you here the parents and the gametes. I'd like you to work out the genotypes and the phenotypes of the offspring, so pause the video now and try this yourself. Okay, I'm showing you the cross here. On average, 25% of the offspring are homozygous for the capital C allele. In other words, they're not affected at all. 50% of the offspring are heterozygous. In other words, they are carriers of the cystic fibrosis allele. And finally, 25% of the offspring are homozygous for the lower case C allele. These offspring have cystic fibrosis. In terms of ratios, we've got 1 out of 4 not affected, 2 out of 4 who are carriers, and 1 out of 4 with cystic fibrosis. However, remember that these are only probabilities. In the next video, we look at the inherited disorder polydactyly. Remember, you'll find plenty of questions on genetic crosses in my Vision workbook, and you can get that by clicking on the link above.